Hello everyone. Uh, today we talk about topic number 17, Basics of Transphysiology, lecture Shevchenko Alexander, Baltic Federal University, Medical Institute, Kaliningrad 2020. So, uh, as you see, we today talk about blood transfusion and every doctor's, uh, doctor must uh, know what is blood transfusion, how to do it, how to define blood type, because uh, every doctor has an opportunity to provide blood transfusion. And not only opportunity, uh, Today, in many situations, it's only one uh, possible chance to save patient life. So, transphysiology. It is a field of medicine that studies mixing and fusion biological fluids, in particular blood and its components, blood groups and their antigens, lymph and also problems of compatibility and incompatibility, post-transfusion reactions and their prophylaxis, prophylaxis and treatment. We have two main antigen systems. Under antigen systems we mean complex of a blood antigen that inherit by a lot of genes. All antigens divided on cellular and immune antigens. Cellular, it's on uh, the surface of the red blood cells and immune uh, placed in the plasma. Cellular antigens are complex carbohydrate protein or glycopeptides that are structural components of their blood cell membrane. Here we see these blue hexagons which symbolize carbohydrate which connected to the purple protein. So uh, we have carbohydrate protein or glycopeptides which presents uh, the cellular um, antigen which placed on the uh, phospholipid layer of the cell membrane. Uh, antigens differ from other components of the cell membrane by two uh, specific uh, features. Immunogenicity and serological activity. Immunogenicity, the ability of antigens to induce the production of antibodies if they enter an organism that does not have these antigens. And serological activity, this ability of antigen to combine with antibodies of the same name. An antigen is any substance that the body considers foreign or potentially dangerous and against which the body usually begins to produce its antibodies. Uh, so it takes place immune response in this case. Antibodies or immunoglobulins, a type of protein compounds of blood plasma synthesized by plasma cells in the human body and other warm-blooded animals in response to the ingress of foreign or potentially dangerous substances. The main ones in transphysiology are antigen system, AB0 and rhesus factor. Uh, so we must define uh, our blood uh, we must determine blood type by system AB0, rhesus factor, and before ordering blood, it is necessary to conduct phenotyping and determine antiretrocyte antibodies. Phenotyping for antigen, antigens C big, C little, E big, E little, and K big or K little. Somebody calls KO system. And determination of antiretrocyte antibodies in the recipient is carried out in the clinical diagnostic laboratory. History of exploring of rhesus factor. It's very interesting uh, moment. You must uh, don't understand. Uh, uh, probably you didn't understand for now why. Uh, 
it's depicted by <laughs> a rabbit and a monkey but I, I try to explain. In 1940s Dr. Karl von Steiner and Alexander Wiener published a report on serum that also interacts with about 85% uh, of various human red blood cells. This serum was obtained by immunizing rabbits with the rhesus macaque red blood cells. The antigens that had caused the immunization was called the Rh factor to indicate that the blood of the rhesus macaque was used in the manufacture of the serum. So this is why uh, we have such strange name for one of antigens. Today we know more than 250 red blood cells antigens uh, form a more than 20 antigen system. 13 system have clinical significance. AB0, Rhesus, Daphim, MNS, HID, Alus, Lutheran, Diego, Auberger, Dumbrock, and I. Other, uh, all this antigenic system of erythrocytes at the present time is uh, not important to the blood transfusion because their uh, antigens. Um, Immunogenicity not so high, but if we talk about uh, AB0 uh, and rhesus factor, it's uh, very high. Antigen system AB0. The AB0 system is the main serological system that determines the compatibility or incompatibility of transfused blood. It consists of two genetically determined agglutinogens antigens A and B, and two agglutinins antibodies, alpha and beta. Uh, you must understand that antigens A and B placed on the glucopeptides, which placed on the membrane of the red blood cells, and antibodies alpha and beta placed in the plasma. Agglutinin alpha is an antibody to agglutinogen a and agglutinogen uh, agglutinin beta is an antibody to agglutinogen B. So, if in blood we see that we have agglutinin alpha and agglutinogen A, they make the reaction of hemagglutination, and agglutinin beta uh, connects with the agglutinogen B we see the reaction of uh, we see the reaction of uh, hemagglutination too so you must remember that at the same time cannot exist alpha and a and beta and b so if you connect these um, types different types of blood which contains these parts particles uh, you can see reaction of hemagglutination and probably you would harm to the patient or even kill the patient if you transfused uh, incompatible blood. So what is the blood group? Dependent on the combination of antigens A and B in the red blood cells and respectively in the serum and of antibodies alpha and beta, all people are divided into four groups. Blood groups a combination of normal immunological and genetic characteristics of blood, which is inherently determined and this biological property of each individual. What does it mean? It means um, our blood type given on from, the, from our birth and for the rest of our life. Uh, if we speak frankly, not even from the birth, uh, from the embryonic uh, development, we have our our blood group, and uh, blood group didn't change with time. We have four uh, major blood groups uh, by system AB zero. You can see 
numbers, Latin numbers, Roman um, numbers uh, around gr group names. In Russian, we have names uh, first, second, third, and fourth blood group, but the, another whole world um, called them group 0, group A, group B, and group AB. Um, on the further slides, you will see why they named so like this, because in the Great Britain, in the middle of the 20th century, uh, some scientists try to explore what does it mean, what group, why we have so much reaction of agglutinations, and uh, he see that most widely spread group is first. Second is the second, third is the third, and fourth is the fourth, less, uh, less uh, lesser meat in the population that all uh, upper group blood groups. So, group zero. There are no agglutinogens in the red blood cells, and agglutinins alpha and beta are present in serum. Group A. In red blood cells, agglutinogen A. In serum, agglutinin beta. Group B. In red blood cells, agglutinogen B. In serum, agglutinin alpha. Group AB. In red blood cells, agglutinogen A and B. There are no agglutinins in the serum. We have two uh, major methods of determinant of blood groups by system AB0. First, it's monoclonal antibody in Russian soliclone. It's, um, it's easy to do, it's fast and it's highly reliable. Standard serums. It's not so easy to do. Uh, it has some higher percent of false reactions uh, if you compare it to the monoclonal antibody. And frankly speaking, we have third type of the determine, uh, method of determining blood groups. It's standard uh, erythrocytes, but uh, standard erythrocytes make uh, only in the lab. Uh, I write down about this here. Uh, you see the plate here, whereby the standard serums we have reaction of hemagglutination in the first and in the second row. It's the first and uh, second hole uh, where we see that um, blood is broke down to small pieces. Monoclonal antibodies. Its specific antibodies obtained as a result of uh, multiplication of a hybrid clan of plasma cells and monoglobulins with high specificity and homology. What does it mean? We cloned uh, antibodies for many, many times and they didn't change. So it's uh, hom homogenic, it has a whole homology. We have four different types of monoclonal antibodies, anti-A, anti-B, anti-AB, and anti-D. Anti-A, uh, usually its color is uh, red, anti-B usually is blue, anti-AB usually is uh, yellow, and anti-D have no color at all. The technique of the de determination of monoclonal uh, of blood types by monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies anti-A, anti-B, and anti-AB is applied to the white tablet, uh, not tablet, uh, white plate. One large drop on the, the corresponding labels, uh, like you see here. But uh, if uh, this type of what definition by the standard serums, but we have another uh, science if we uh, defini uh, determin determined our blood type with monoclonal antibodies. So, 
We take monoclonal antibodies anti-A, anti-B, anti-AB under the corresponding labels. We make one large drop of uh, every one of these. Next to the antibody drops, apply one small drop of the tested blood. After mixing the components, the agglutination reaction is absorbed for 2-3 minutes. Agglutination usually occurs within the first 3 seconds. And next, we must evaluate the results. If you see in the so-called grey color, it means that we didn't have any reaction of agglutination. And if you see that our bl blood is um, broke down, it means um, we have reaction of agglutination. So, as I see before, uh, we have percent frequency in the UK population meet first group or group zero, 47% of meeting in the population. Group A meeting the population 32%, group B 8% in the whole population, and group AB or 4 group only 3% in the whole population. Uh, when we add um, anti A and TB to the first blood group, we have no reaction of agglutination because group 0 doesn't have agglutinogens A or B. When we talk about the second or A blood group, we have reaction hemagglutination with anti-A uh, monoclonal antibodies because second blood group have uh, agglutinogen A. When we talk about group B, we have hemagglutination with uh, monoclonal antibodies anti-B because group B have uh, uh, agglutinogen B and when we talk about fourth blood group because uh, he, it, has, um, it has agglutinogens A and B we have reaction of agglutination with anti-A and anti-B so I hope you understand the principle of evaluation of results of the blood groups with monoclonal antibodies because it's very easy and much more harder if you determination uh, determined of blood groups using standard serums. So standard is a hemagglutination serums of groups first, second and third are applied on a plate in a volume 0.1 milliliter, one large cap about one centimeter in diameter. Under the appropriate group designation, to avoid errors, apply two series of standard serums to each of the groups, since one of the series may have low activity and not give a clear agglutination. In total, six drops are obtained. Two rows of three drops in order from left to right, first, second and third. Put one large drop on a plate, from which it is taken with a glass stick and transferred to each drop of serum and mixed. After mixing, the plate is periodically shaken. Agglutination be begins within the first 10 to 30 seconds, but observation should be made for 5 minutes. In those drops where agglutination occurred, add one drop of an isotonic solution of sodium chloride, after which the reaction result is evaluated. Here we see evaluation of the reaction results. When we talk about first blood group, because it haven't uh, any agglutinogens, and we know so, uh, what uh, serum of the first blood group have agglutinins, alpha and beta, second have only beta, and third have only alpha, but uh, it haven't uh, mm, it have nothing with uh, what it can contract because zero uh, can exist with alpha and can exist with beta. When we talk about the second blood group, we have reaction with the first serum and the third serum. Why? Because agglutinogen A cannot exist with agglutinin 
a alpha and here we talk about about the same uh, serum of the first blood group have agglutinin agglutinogens oh, agglutinin sorry uh, alpha and alpha cannot uh, exist with a it makes a reaction of hemagglutination so alpha cannot exist with the a when we talk about third blood group uh, we talk about hemagglutination in case of the first serum and the second blood group serum why exactly uh, because the same reason as a but b cannot exist with beta so if we see uh, in this case we have beta in the first blood group and the uh, second blood group so we have a reaction of hemagglutination because of the serum serum of the third blood group we have in serum only a uh, alpha sorry alpha agglutinins which didn't contract with the b antigen and when we talk about antigen of the third blood group uh, reaction of hemagglutination occurs in the case of the first second and third blood group uh, why do you uh, think I placed here serum of the third blood group? Because sometimes we have uh, defective, uh, defective blood which we want to test. And sometimes when we test uh, first, uh, fourth blood group, as you know, we have nothing in the serum of the fourth blood group. So sometimes if you see that we add fourth blood group um, blood which we want to test to the fourth serum we see reaction of hemagglutination and when we see reaction of hemagglutination uh, our sample is broken down it, it means we must uh, remade this experiment another one time and uh, in this case we must use it for the first uh, blood group because if we didn't see uh, any reaction maybe date uh, of our serum is expired and it didn't do any reaction to the uh, fourth blood type or maybe when we took our tested blood is the first group and we see reaction of hemagglutination with the fourth uh, serum it means our sample is uh, compromised and we must redo this probe uh, determining of the resus factor is similar to definition of the monoclonal antibodies we take anti-D monoclonal antibody we make one large drop on the plate and add one small uh, tiny blood drop mixed it with the glass stick and wait for three minutes and if we see the reaction of hemagglutination it means we have a uh, rhesus positive blood group and if we didn't see um, any reaction of hemagglutination we talk about rhesus negative blood type here we see reaction of agglutination uh, this blood is rhesus positive because it mixed with the monoclonal antibody NTD this is another example of reaction of agglutination I want um, that you uh, I want to show you how much more of reaction of agglutination because sometimes um, you didn't understand do we have reaction of agglutination or no in this case please redo this uh, experiment um, because if you made a mistake complication will be very severe and people can die so don't do the blood transfusion and if you didn't uh, want any complication uh, in case when our result is not obvious 
and you can ask why uh, this circle is so dark. This is because uh, monoclonal antibodies NTB is uh, usually blue color. So when we add um, blood, it's often more darker than NTA, like in this case. I tried to show you a small video. I don't think this is the best video. Uh, how, how, how. This is the video of uh, determining the blood uh, type by the monoclonal antibodies. We have improvised a uh, plate where the, we designated NTA and NTB, this is in Russian, so uh, didn't uh, confuse by this. Um, and under um, this we place the name of the patient, uh, Ivanov, e, e, uh, for example. And we have uh, two different monoclonal antibodies, monoclonal antibodies NTA and monoclonal antibodies NTB. As I say, in Russian it calls soliclone. We, here we uh, have the seria um, of this monoclonal antibody and uh, date of experience. Uh, here we see that uh, it's November and December uh, 2005. And also we have temperature, uh, temperature under which we can uh, store this component.